Hi, welcome to the second video on news vendor problem. I'm assuming that you've seen the first video already um, and you're ready for nine minutes of learning of uh, how to extend the news vendor problem concept. Let's look at the sheet we had in the previous video. Now, here we had an object which was selling for around $80. The cost price was $80. Uh, selling price was 150 and the salvage value or the scrap value was $60. Uh, the marginal profit profit from selling one additional item was 150 minus 80, $70. The marginal loss, loss of having one unsold item is 80 minus 60, which is $20. The demand was discrete, is it, it could be only these values, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, the values here, these are the probabilities of the demand. 5%, um, 15%, Sub, these are the supply values, the table gives us the various profit values for demand supply um, combination, so let's look at one. Uh, if the unit sold is 20, um, in this case the demand is for 20 and uh, sub supply is 21, um, we will have sell 20 units because whichever is lower and earn $1400 from it. Uh, we will uh, have one unsold, so lose $20 from it. Net will be $1,400 minus $20, $1,380. All the details are there in the previous video. So if you're not with me, please go and have a look at this video and come back. All right. Now, the model that we created last uh, in the last session is applicable only for discrete demand. When the demand is 20, 20, something like this, 20, 21, 22, fixed values. It's not applicable if, if, the, if the demand is specified as the demand is normally distributed with, with average of say 30 pieces and a standard deviation of 3 pieces. This method cannot be used or any other distribution. Now what we'll do is try to approach a method which we can use for continuous demand. So in the second video we'll touch base on a method and third video we will finalize that method to be used for continuous demand. That's how demand is mostly specified in real life. Right, so let's start. Um, when I have a demand of 20, right? So, so my first demand is 20. My profit, profit for um, stocking 20 will always be 1400 dollars, which is known to us. Please bear with my poor writing. It's 1400 dollars. Now, when I stock one additional unit, I will sell that unit whenever demand is 21, 22, 23, or 24. And I will not sell that unit, one additional unit, when the demand is 20. So let's represent this again. So my profit, profit from selling 21 is equal to profit from selling 20, which is 1400, plus that additional $70, which I will be able to gain only 95% of the times. I got 95 because demand is greater than 20, 95% of the times. And whenever demand is greater than 20, I will be able to sell this additional unit minus a loss of $20. And this loss I will incur 5% of the times. Right now, let me use um, this. Uh, I've already calculated the numbers here, so you can have a look at it. Um, here. So 70 times 0 0.95 is uh, 66.50. So when I look at here, I get a value of 66 equals 66, 1400 plus 66.50 minus 1. And this equals 1465 this is 65.50 so 1465.50 now if you look at this this is exactly equal to this value here have a look 1465 now let's get to the next point how much money will i make if i have a profit from 22 which is equal to 1 Four six five point fifty. This is the money that I make from selling twenty one plus seventy dollars, and the probability of earning seventy dollars is point two plus point four plus point two. This is the probability that the demand is twenty two or greater. 
which is 2 plus 4 plus 2 is 0 0.80 minus 20 dollars probability of not selling here is equal to 0.5 this is both of this make it 0.2 so this comes to be again 0 0.2 and if I add it all again if you look here it has been the calculation is done to make our life easy 1465 plus 70 into times 0 0.8 minus 20 into 0 0.2 to get 1517 this is exactly so even this method is helping us come to the right solutions um, so we can we can arrive at actual solutions quite easily this is 1517.5 uh, so, so you should be able to do pr the formula for profit from stocking 23. You can pause the video and write the numbers on your own. Try it. Pause it. Write it on your own so that you know if it's correct or not. Okay. If you paused, welcome back. I'll get profit from 23 as 1517.50, which is the value from here, plus $70. The probability that I'll sell 23 is 0.4 and 0.2. Whenever demand is greater than, equal to greater than 23, I'll sell it. So this is 0.6 minus 20, and the probability of not selling is 0.4, which, if you calculate, will be 1551.5. Wonderful. So long as the profit keeps on increasing, so 1465. 1517 increased, 1551 increased. I'll keep on trying to increase my stock. Profit from 24. Again, if you got it wrong here, stop. Try to write the equation on your own and see if we are in, on the same line. This would be so. Please pause the video and write. Okay, welcome back. Um, 1551.50. Plus 70, the probability of selling this additional unit is only 0 0.2, so 0 0.2 minus 20, and the probability of not selling is 0 0.8, which would equal 1549.5. This has reduced, so we will stop at 23, which is the same decision we had uh, when we were talking about this. We stopped at 23. Right? So both the methods give us essentially the same answer or what we to start. Now let's try and understand this. Now in this method, we continued to increase. The important thing was this number here, which is the change in profit, had to be positive. If this was positive, that means the profit would increase from the previous number. So if this is positive, the profit increased and we could produce. If this was positive, which it was not, uh, we, we could not increase. We go back and so we stop at 23. So what we are essentially saying is that profit P of the probability of selling, which comes from the right hand side, summation of the right hand side, 0.2 plus 0.4 plus 0.2 and so on, into marginal profit, which is this number 70, minus the probability of not selling, this is 1 minus p, so probability of selling is p, probability of not selling is 1 minus p into marginal loss. This number, so long as it is greater than or equal to 0, we can keep on producing. That's what we are essentially saying. If I open um, the brackets, expand this, I get p times mp minus ml plus P times ML has to be greater than 0. I take this ML on this side and club the P. So I get P MP plus ML has to be greater than or equal to this ML comes this side becomes positive or we get P has to be greater than or equal to ML marginal loss upon marginal profit plus marginal loss. This is a very important formula for us in the news vendor. This is called the criticality ratio. So long as the probability of selling 
is greater than or equal to this criticality ratio, we will keep on producing or keep on increasing our stocks. As soon as P reduces below this number, that's the point of the stocking policy. Now, this is a relation which is very useful for continuous distributions or large distributions where we cannot have detailed calculations like this. Thank you for watching. See you in the third video where we will take this formula ahead and see how to use it. See you there.